solid state, crystalline and amorphous solids, four types of crystalline solids. Firstly, let me teach you some basic concepts of solid which we have already learned. We know that solids have definite shape and definite volume. Secondly, we learn that strong intermolecular forces exist between the particles of solids. Thirdly, solids cannot be compressed and they do not fill the container like gases. So note down these common properties of all solids. Now there are two types of solids, crystalline solids and amorphous solids. In crystalline solids, there is regular arrangement of particles in space. For example, all the particles in the crystalline solids are regularly arranged in three-dimensional way. While in amorphous solids, there is irregular arrangement of particles in the space. For example, particles have this type of irregular arrangement in amorphous solids. Secondly, in crystalline solids, there is long order in arrangement of the particles. For example, we can see that all the particles have same arrangement throughout the lattice. While in amorphous solids, there is short order in arrangement of the particles. For example, these particles are orderly arranged, but soon this pattern breaks and we get irregular arrangement. Thirdly, crystalline solids are called true solids, while amorphous solids are called pseudo-solids or supercooled liquids. Here, let me ask you, do you know that why crystalline solids are called true solids and amorphous solids are called pseudo-solids or supercooled liquids? Well, let me explain it. Crystalline solids are called true solids because they have true properties of solids. Like they have regular arrangement of particles, they have long order and arrangement, etc. Personally, I call them perfect solids. While amorphous solids are called pseudo-solids because they have fake properties of solids. Like they have no regular arrangement of particles, no order and arrangement of particles, etc. Personally, I call them imperfect solids. Also, we call amorphous solids as supercooled liquids. It is because they have ability to flow like liquids over time if temperature changes. Here, let me teach you one of the most important questions of exam. Why is glass called a supercooled liquid? Well, glass is an amorphous solid. Molecules are irregularly arranged in it, due to which molecules can flow if there is change in temperature. For example, if temperature changes, then glass can flow like viscous fluid or honey if temperature is increased. So we therefore call it supercooled liquid. Fourthly, crystalline solids have sharp melting point. The range of melting point is less than 5 degrees centigrade. For example, the melting point of sodium chloride is 801 degree centigrade. It may either increase or decrease by 5 degree centigrade depending upon various factors. While amorphous solids have ranged melting point, the range of melting point is greater than 5 degree centigrade. For example, the melting point of glass is from 1400 degree centigrade up to 1600 degree centigrade. Fifthly, Crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature, while amorphous solids are isotropic in nature. Do you know the meaning of anisotropic and isotropic property? Well, let me explain it. Anisotropic means that crystalline solids have different physical properties in different directions. For example, consider wood. The speed of light would be different in the wood in different directions. While isotropic means that amorphous solids have the same physical properties in all directions. For example, consider glass. The speed of light would be the same in all directions. Sixthly, the examples of crystalline solids are sodium chloride, iron, gold, sugar, etc. While the examples of amorphous solids are glass, rubber, wax, etc. Thus noted down all these important points about crystalline solids and amorphous solids. Now let me teach you the four types of crystalline solids. 
because we have to study all about crystalline solids in our college course. The four types of crystalline solids are ionic solids, metallic solids, covalent solids and molecular solids. To learn all about these four types of crystalline solids, let me teach you my personal trick. I always teach as ionic solids contain ionic bond, metallic solids contain metallic bond, covalent solids contain covalent bond and molecular solids also contain covalent bond. Now I will write the properties of each bond respectively. Ionic solids contain ionic bond so their examples are sodium chloride, calcium carbonate, magnesium oxide etc. Metallic solids contain metallic bond so their examples are iron, gold and silver. Covalent solids contain covalent bonds so their examples are diamond, graphite and silicon dioxide. Molecular solids also contain covalent bond so their examples are ice, sugar and carbon dioxide. Now I will write all the physical properties of these compounds. Ionic solids like sodium chloride are made up of cations and anions like sodium ion and chlorine ion. I mean they are made up of metals and non-metals. They have high melting points. They are brittle in nature. They are insulated in solid states but in molten or aqueous solution they are conductor or conduct electricity. Secondly, metallic solid like iron are made up of metal atoms like iron atom which have C of D localized electrons. They have high melting points. They are malleable and ductile. They are good conductor of electricity because they have C of D localized electrons. Thirdly, Covalent solids like diamond are made up of non-metal atoms like carbon. They have high melting points. They are hard in nature. They are poor conductor or semiconductor of electricity. Fourthly, the molecular solids like ice are made up of molecules like H2O. They have low melting points. They are soft in nature. They are insulator or non-conductors. Thus noted down all these important points about the four types of crystalline solids. I hope that you have learned all about crystalline solids and amorphous solids.